Hello, welcome today. We'll be talking about the artist Suzanne Valadon. Here we have a depiction of her, a photo taken with a cat, because cats are wonderful. Uh, Suzanne Valadon was born to a poor washerwoman from Belenese, France in 1865. Uh, she never knew her father, she was a bastard child. Uh, this rocky beginning would mark her future, as this marginalized status would help... She, she would always buck against this kind of status. She was very much about bucking tradition and pushing, moving forward. Uh, when she was five, she was sent to live with her aunt in Paris by her mother, hoping to help escape the stigma attached to her because of this, because at the time was seen as not very pleasant to be to be the child of someone who was unmarried. Um, she came to live in Montmartre, one of the districts in Paris that is known for its lively streets where artists, prostitutes, pimps, other creative types like that would um, tend to gather. Uh, she grew up the streets roaming and creating mischief, while her mother worked as a house cleaner, and she would often look at this time fondly in her life. Uh, she was stubborn, independent, and hot-tempered even from a young age, but she was also fun-loving, sensitive, charming, always full of boundless energy. She soon got a reputation for tall tales, preferring the realities she would come up than, than accepting the, the circumstances she was placed into. Uh, notably, she claimed that the 15th century poet Francois Villon was her real father. Um, at, as soon as at the age of eight, this started bleeding over into her arts. She started being able to, she started starting doing drawings and stuff at this time, showing talent already. Um, and when she had an accident at 15, which took her out of her job as an acrobat in the circus, she channeled this energy into art. Um, she started the, her career in the art world not as an artist per se, but as a model. She would learn from the artists she modeled from by talking to them and sometimes seducing them. She was known for having quite a few lovers, but um, this helped her get insights into the world that not necessarily a lot of women at the time got to see. Um, she turned her sh this job that was seen as shameful as a way to help further her own career. And here are examples one she was used as a model in by Pierre Auguste Renault. Uh, she's depicted as the woman in white. Uh, here is a self-portrait of her from 1898. Um, at the age of 15, she met someone named Miguel Utrio at La Chat Noir. It's a cafe in France that was known for being a gathering of various painters, musicians, artists, and writers working at the time. Uh, this would soon blossom into romance, and at the age of 18, she would give birth to her son, Matrice Utrio. There's some debate whether or not Uthri um, Miguel is actually the father of Matrice, but because their relationship wasn't exactly exclusive. However, he claimed the child legally. Um, this debate would continue as Valadon would take many lovers throughout her life, and many husbands. Um, her earliest work is documented as a self-portrait done in pastel in 1883, uh, and the earliest nude, which she's most famous for, especially nudes of the female body, was done in 1892. Um, she, in 1895, she exhibited 12 etchings of women in various stages of undress, and would continue to regularly show exhibits across Paris from then. Um, in 1892, she had a love affair with the composer Eric Satie, while also seeing a wealthy stockbroker in Paul Moise. Eventually, this relationship ended, and she ended up marrying Mr. Moise in 1896. Um, she would spend the next 13 years with Mr. Moise, living with him and helping develop her painting of the female figure, as well as helping her own son, who started showing a good talent in art, but was prone to violent outbursts and struggle with alcoholism. This is a depiction of, her, of one of her paintings, Casting the Net. This is the joy of life. These are both famous works for her. They, she liked to depict the female figure as it was, not necessarily idealized. So she would she would try to make her paintings very faithful. In her later years, she eventually met a man named Andre Utier, who was the friend of her son Maurice. Despite twenty years more than a twenty year age difference, the two of them became lovers, which did not make her husband at the time very happy. She divorced Mr. Moise for, for Utier, and um, by 1914, she and Utier were married again. Uh, this is uh, another famous depiction of hers. This is the abandoned doll, showing a sort of transitional period from becoming a child into a woman. This is uh, her niece and her aunt depicted here. The Blue Room is another famous piece for hers. This is her, the artist herself laying on a large, fancy, lavish uh, sofa. Um, after World War I, her son Maurice's paintings, the landscapes that he did, started becoming the main source of income for the family, being valued even more highly than Valadon's paintings herself because of her status as a woman at the time, which was to a great annoyance of her, and rightly so. Um, 
her romantic relationship began to deteriorate because of Maurice's erratic behavior and jealousy, considering he was Maurice's friend originally, and yet his mother married it, married his friend, I could see the awkward family drama. Um, even as she aged, she would continue to paint daily her figures, um, mostly even of herself. She would depict faithfully. She wouldn't shy away from showing the effects of aging on her body. She wasn't trying to gussy, gussy herself up that way. Um, by the time she was 70, her health started declining, and one of her friends um, stop, uh, to, offered to take care of Maurice during this time of ill health, named Louise, Louise, Lucy Powells. Powells and Maurice soon married, which left Valadon very much alone as her son moved away, and feeling like the woman had married her son only for his money. Um, despite these hardships, she continued to paint and exhibit, um, making more landscapes and still lifes in the final years of her life. On April 7th, 1938, she was found painting at her easel, having had a stroke. Um, at the time of her death, she was known for being made th having made 300 drawings, over 450 oil paintings, and more than 30 etchings. Just quite a lot of work. Um, Suzanne had a lot of impact on the world of art, being she depicted things very faithfully. She would depict the body as it was, especially the female form, which is something that wasn't done very often at the time. So she helped push the world of art forward by helping bring that realism into it, and being a very prominent female artist helped others go on and launch themselves off of her own success. 